Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. This is the long-awaited QA video for the Hornet King channel. You guys have asked over 270 questions in the community post that I made in regards to this QA video, and I've narrowed that down to 11 questions. Here's the video. Check it out. So the first thing to identify is what actually pain is. And pain is a break in the neuron to the brain and causes a, a pain stimuli. And so wasp venom acts on that very mechanism. So wasps also being usually brightly colored um, in nature usually means stay away. Um, so what happens is when wasps are further threatened, they sting an individual or an animal or something and their venom goes into the, the soft tissue and starts attacking cells, starts attacking normal body cells. And it, the peptides and the enzymes inside start breaking down cellular walls. So as that starts to happen to neurons specifically, there's a pain reception signal sent to the brain. And the brain says, holy crap, there's something majorly wrong, which is the genius of the venom. There's not something majorly wrong. It's a minute little tiny stick with a little bit of chemical, which is making the brain think that something major is wrong. So the individual or the animal evades that situation and gets, gets out of there as fast as they can. That's the whole purpose of the venom. The venom isn't to kill somebody. It's literally to scare them off to, to leave their nest. So as things continue and progress, after the pain signal goes to the brain, that's the initial response, then the sting itself has not only peptides and enzymes, but also has norepinephrine. So that stops the blood flow to that site. So the reason why isn't so much to keep things from coming in as much as it is to keep the venom from leaving the site. So it stays concentrated in that one spot. So it can continue to break down cells, continue to cause pain, and it will continue to isolate that spot. So there's a third aspect to the venom, which is a MCDP, which is a mast cell degranulation peptide. And how that works is it starts then breaking down connective tissues and breaking down further cells in correlation. So it acts almost like a chain reaction bomb. So what it does is it starts causing more inflammation and swelling and the more cells and tissues start to become affected more than just neurons or localized. Then it's as the uh, blood starts making its way in, the blood cells start getting attacked and white blood cells start getting attacked and that, that area starts to really swell and become um, really inflamed. The body isn't reacting so much to the venom as much as it's reacting to the mechanism of the venom. So people who are allergic, um, their body is overreacting. So, so someone like me who's not allergic, when I get stung, um, my body reacts strictly to the, to the mechanism of the, of the venom. So it's not so much reacting to what's happening here as much as it's more reacting here. So once that norepinephrine starts kicking in, the body starts reacting to that and sending a lot of white blood cells and things to that area to try to draw the venom out. So people who are allergic, that, that swelling of things becomes systemic. So it's not just on their arm. Now it's in their throat. It's in soft tissues pretty much systemically. Um, so when people say they're allergic, they're not really allergic to the venom. So they're having an overreaction to the presence of the venom itself and not the actual venom, not the peptides, not the enzymes, not the norepinephrine or the mast cell degranulation peptide. It is a physical impossibility to become immune to a bee sting or a wasp sting which is um, comparative to saying because you've been burned several times throughout your life that you become immune to feeling the pain of a burn. Um, so it's, it's just as similar to that. You can't become immune to a bee sting or a wasp sting from feeling the pain of it, uh, no matter how many times you get stung. Now, what can happen is that people can become a bit desensitized to it. So people who take care of bees, um, actual bees, like honeybees, that they, um, they stop feeling the, the pain as being as great as maybe someone who's pretty green at it or pretty new at it. Um, so for me, like I, when I get stung, it hurts, 
but I kind of expect it. You know, I kind of just assumed I'm going to get stung, so I, I'm aware of it, and I, I, it's not as much of a surprise. For the most part, with most people, is that it's a surprise. They're out mowing their grass, they're out trimming their bushes, and all of a sudden they get stung, and it scares them, and startles them, and then the adrenaline kicks in, they start having that fight or flight, and they freak out, and they run away, and then it's, it, it kind of intensifies it. As opposed to me, when I go into a, do a removal, I'm very aware that I'm, I'm amongst thousands of wasps so the chances that i'm gonna get stung is pretty high and i just kind of assume like okay well I'm, i might get stung here so i'm very aware of it so as far as career paths are concerned the only career path i really had i left i left high school when i was 15 and um i started apprenticing as a stonemason and i did that for about eight years or so and um, learn the trade, learn the skill, and I've become a, a master stonemason. I've also been in really trying situations where I'm holding hands of people who are dying. Um, then when I was in my like early 20s, um, I decided to go back to school to become a nurse. I was always interested in medicine, and I, I really liked the idea of taking care of people. Um, I have that caring heart. And um, so I went back to school to become a nurse. I had the idea of taking care of somebody up until they die. Um, but until you have actually have experienced that and you see how what people look like when they're alive to when they pass and it's amazing to me that that life makes people look like who they are um, when when someone passes away they no longer look like themselves it resembles their their, their lively self but it, it doesn't look like them anymore um, just that essence of life really makes people shine and um, being a nurse being able to experience that and understand that now much better um, puts a whole new perspective on life as a whole and um, and just allows me to to be able to convey the essence of love and understanding and compassion to other people having experienced that firsthand um, so then from nursing I went to uh, kind of tapping back into my, my skill set of, of doing construction. And um, I started doing remodeling for people, um, building cabinets, so doing cabinetry work. I did that for quite a while, maybe about a year and a half. And um, money was horrible. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't making hardly any money doing it, but I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the freedom I was giving myself to do that and kind of believing and investing in myself. My dad had a subterranean yellow jacket nest at his house that he had gassed. And so I came over with my phone and I, I dug the thing up because I wanted to see what it looked like. And this was before I watched any videos on what they look like underground. Um, so I dug the thing up and I was just amazed at what that nest looked like. I could not believe that something like that was growing underground with a hole about the size of a dime. And underneath there was the nest about the size of a small basketball. So I started posting these videos on Facebook and... Uh, and a couple nurse friends of mine reached out to me, one in particular, my, my girl Heather, uh, she reached out to me, yeah, a little plug for you, Heather. Um, she reached out and asked me if I would come and remove a bald faced hornet nest for her. Bit of apprehension because I hadn't done that. Um, I had some ideas of how I wanted to do it, so I got a vacuum and uh, put a little water in the bottom of it and started vacuuming them out at her house. And the, the first time stepping in front of a swarming colony was very, very unnerving. Um, but you, you, you get used to it. Um, the first time when I was in there doing that and I noticed I started, you, you would immediately start to recognize how they behave and the fact that they weren't latching onto me, they were just dive bombing. I'm like, oh, I'm safe in here. I'm safe in this suit. And, um, so I removed that nest for her and then I started getting inundated on Facebook about people who wanted removals done. So I was taking my knowledge that I had learned over the years of just researching wasps in general and applying that to my removal method. So I wasn't just going to somebody's house and dusting or spraying. I was physically removing the nest so that way I could either relocate or I could um, take it apart and, and just see the structure of what it looked like. Um, that was in about June. So I decided then by November when it got cold out, I was like, well, a lot of people are enjoying these videos on Facebook. I'll try to post them on YouTube and see if people are interested. Um, so that's when I started researching other channels and people who were doing it. Um, my man Herc1120 was the first one I came across. Loved his education side of it because that's what I was doing was the education and informative side. Um, so that inspired me further to then make my Hornet King channel. And um, 
So then I started posting about November, and then from November of this past, this past November until now, it has just skyrocketed. And um, so now I was able to make this YouTube channel my full-time job, and then the removal's on the side, and then if I want to do construction or I want to pick up nursing, um, I keep my license active and uh, I keep my insurance active for the, um, for the remodeling and stuff, just in case I decide to do it again. Um, so yeah, so that's the premise. That's how I got started. Those are the jobs I was doing beforehand. Well, that's kind of the point. Um, so this is actually at my parents' place where I've relocated several nests this season, several uh, delicate vespula arenaria nests, which is an aerial nest building yellow jacket, similar to a bald-faced hornet or yellow jacket. Um, so the reason why I relocate is so that they can go on and make colonies for the following season. Um, the whole idea is to allow them to flourish. Now here, as you can see, wherever they choose to, um, to start a new colony the following season is not going to bother anybody. They're far enough away from people. As you can see, it's farmland out there, so um, it's definitely beneficial to have wasps taking care of the pest insects. Being able to do the YouTube videos has been significantly enjoyable aspect is the freedom. I have freedom to do whatever I want from, from hour to hour every day, um, unless I schedule removals or something, but um, tinker with my, my 1929 Ford Model A Roadster. Um, I fix my trucks, I fix my vehicles, and take apart some car, the car down back. Um, but I feed the chickens, I spend time with my animals, I spend time with my family, and that level of freedom is the most valuable part of this whole thing. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I have been making money with it, and, and the money's been good. I mean, I'm not, I'm not rich, uh, but I'm not broke. And that's, that financial freedom is another, uh, another great aspect and avenue um, from doing the YouTube videos. Um, I miss nursing. I miss it a lot. I miss taking care of people. Um, I miss that, that sense of importance. Um, so now that I haven't been doing much nursing, I'm trying to fill up that sense of importance more with these videos by doing education. Um, it's not so much the shock and awe of destroying a colony as much as it is explaining the importance of that colony and why it needs to be removed. The only main influence I have is the Beatles. Um, I'm, I'm a humongous Beatles fan. And by, I mean, big fan, I mean that's all I listen to. Um, from a child all the way up until like my mid-teens, all I listened to was the Beatles. My favorite song, album, and movie is Help by the Beatles. Um, and then in my kind of like mid-teenage years, probably like, you know, early, probably about 14, 15, I started listening to Eminem just with my teenage angst and uh, dealing with some uh, personal stuff. And uh, so I, I listened to Eminem. Well, Eminem's a big part of my, uh, my writing style, um, especially when I write more dark type things. Um, obviously not to the level of vulgarity that he has, but, um, but just that, that style of writing, just very free flow um, stanzas and things. But I love all the Beatles the same. They, have, they were the four best friends I really never had um, growing up as a kid. And um, so growing up and talking about things, I always talk about the Beatles. And uh, so anybody who knows me personally knows that this is kind of an understatement. <laughs> so. um, they ask, why don't I relocate more nests or why do I relocate in the first place? Um, so the reason why I have to pick and choose what nests I relocate um, is viability. So is the nest that I relocate, is it going to survive? Um, so when I do my removals, I don't just do them 10 minutes away from my house. I mean, sometimes I'm an hour away. Um, I also do like four removals in a, in a day on the, during the busy season. And actually just more recently on one of my videos, uh, they commented and said um, basically that I should be relocating every nest that I do, that it's silly that I remove them and kill them. Um, and I try to explain it as tactfully as I can without um, sounding like I'm being condescending because I'm not trying to be. But um, when someone doesn't do wasp nest removals or relocations, they have no idea what it go what goes into it. And that's kind of another reason why I wanted to do this this quick question and answer is because then it can kind of talk a little bit more about this stuff. So when I do a relocation, it's not like I just walk up, bag a nest, and then just 
go right home or go to the wilderness, as this guy said, and just drop off the nest. I mean, it is, it is very time consuming. It's actually a lot quicker for me to do a removal and just feed the nest to my, my chickens um, at the end of the day than it is for me to relocate. So location is a big thing. In the dead of summer, I put these nests into a bin and I try to take them home. I'm, if I'm 50 minutes away from my house, that's a long time for a nest to be in a Rubbermaid bin in the heat for that long of a drive. So I get home and the nest could very well be dead and dead just from the slight increase of temperature. So species is another big thing. Um, species is a, if they're a ground nest, it's virtually impossible for me to relocate. I can physically relocate the nest. And this is where it gets confusing because people say, well, you know, you could easily relocate the nest. Yes, the nest itself can easily be relocated. You dig it up and you take it somewhere else and plop it somewhere else. Underground nests, you have to dig them up. Now you think about this. There's a hole in the ground where the nest lived, right? I have no idea how big the nest is, so I can't prep a site beforehand. So I dig the thing up. I find out how big it is. I put it in a Rubbermaid bin. I vacuumed up a bunch of the wasps that flew around. And then I take that somewhere else. Now I have to dig a hole to match the size of that nest. I have to dig a tunnel to go from that nest to an opening so that the wasps can get in and out. And then I have to put it down in there on top of some stones and things so that way they can the nest isn't just sitting directly in the soil. Um, and then I have to cover somehow cover that hole back over. And some people are going to say, why not just use plywood? So you, you have to, there's so much prep work to doing that. And now you have to think about, you probably have about maybe one one hundredth of the workers left in that colony. And most of them are in between the combs, which are probably new males and new queens and maybe some workers. And you have all this larva that is now starving and needing to be fed. And there's no foragers to go out and do it because you just vacuum them all up. So this guy had mentioned, well, then get a vacuum that solely sucks up the wasps and doesn't kill them. Okay, now you're talking about spending all this time vacuuming up individual wasps and trapping them to then take them somewhere else. Well, I'm going from removal to removal to removal, and now I'm going to have a vacuum filled with all kinds of wasps. Now that vacuum's obsolete. So now I have to buy another vacuum to go to the next removal and another vacuum to go to the next. It's just unrealistic. And I tried to explain that to this guy, and he just wasn't getting it. He was he was saying that other people are doing it. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm really happy other people are doing it. And I'm happy that other people are willing to relocate. They're not relocating ground nests. I can guarantee you that. Um, and they're not relocating nests that they're pulling out of people's houses. Um, I've done that. And it worked, but it was a huge nest. It was a multi-season nest. If I had pulled out a single season nest, there, there would have been no way that, that nest would have survived. Um, so... There's just quite a few factors. Now, the main factor, here's the biggest thing, Locate, relocation, okay? So we're talking about another location where I have to take the nest to. Um, this guy said transfer it to the wild. Okay, well, specifically in my area, there is no wild. Um, any property I step foot on is someone else's property. Someone else has a deed to that property, or they lease it, or they rent it, or whatever, there is no wild. I'm not going like into the Amazon rainforest or something. Like I'm literally walking on someone else's property and around here is a lot of Amish and things. Um, but you know, I, I can't just, I, I can't just take a nest to somebody else's property and, and dig a hole and put it in it or hang it from a tree branch or whatever. Um, so when I do my relocations, I do them either to my house or my parents' house. My parents have a nice wood. So, you know, I put it, you know, can put nests in there. Um, so what I've done here is I was able to relocate about five bald-faced hornet nests on my property. But bald-faced hornets, people think they're territorial, but the fact that they're all the same species, I wasn't really concerned about them attacking each other. However, if I was put an Arenaria nest next to a bald-faced hornet nest, I'm fairly certain the bald-faced hornets would attack the Arenaria nest. Um, so I really can't put them all side by side. Um, so I have taken two Arenaria nests over to my parents' woods, plus a bald-faced hornet nest a little further up in the woods, so it's kind of give them a nice cushion. But for the amount of nests that I remove in a season, there is no way I would have enough room to put all those nests at that location. So these are things that 
most people, when they suggest this stuff, and they usually do it argumentatively, like, how dare you, you know, basically saying I'm a terrible person because I remove nests and don't relocate every one of them. Um, and those people are just very unrealistic and have never done it before and watched a few YouTube videos, probably one of mine, and assume that they know everything about relocating. And, you know, being someone who does it, I can guarantee you that it's just not possible. Um, so then the last thing is nest damage, and this isn't a huge factor, but it is something I do look into. Um, bald-faced hornets, specifically, I showed this to you. Um, so like bald-faced hornets, you know, I pulled out the nest and you see uh, insect damage. So there's there's uh, earwig damage or some other kind of mite, um, something that's killing the larva, and you can see how oh, the nest has been chewed by the adults as they're trying to get this threat out. Um, and you really don't know that until you crack the nest open. So there are times where I'll see that the colony doesn't have a lot of foragers and things, and that's usually because there's a break in the mating adults and killing them, so there wasn't any new adults hatching. So as foragers decreases, then there's nothing to replace them. So the colony size shrinks, and that's usually an indicator that there's damage. So not every nest is relocatable, even for that reason. So. So I'm very much aware of these uh, these new channels that have popped up more recently, and um, and how they've been similar to my my channel. Um, but something I want people to understand is that I'm not the first person to be making these kind of videos. Um, when I first got started and was doing removals for people, um, I started watching videos on YouTube then too, just to see how other people do it. And I found Herc 1120. Uh, um, maybe some of you have heard of him. Um, but he actually doesn't live too far from me here in PA. Um, and I started watching his videos and was really excited by the fact that somebody else was making videos similar to mine. And, um, you know, we reached out to each other. I was commenting on his videos. He was commenting on mine. And it was more of a, um, a, a colleague-type relationship more so than competition. And even so now, um, he throws me a lot of removals, um, just referrals, because he can't get to all of them because he's really busy. And... Um, and he also, uh, we've done a collaboration video I'll, up top here. Uh, there's a link up there. You guys can check that out. Um, really good guy. We try to help each other out. It's a really good relationship and friendship. Um, so, but more recently, since my channel's come out, I have noticed a couple other individuals pop up that are, uh, that are making videos that are similar to mine and, you know, they have similar content. But that doesn't mean they're copying off of me by any means. And some of these guys are... Um, exterminators, they're technicians, and they work for companies that, that, that do more than just wasp nest removals. Um, and even if they, I did inspire them, I'm extremely flattered that they would, you know, choose to do removal videos based off the inspiration from my channel. Um, of course, that doesn't mean I want them to copy off me, but so far the ones that I've seen aren't copying off of me, and they are adding their own spin to things. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, my, my, um, my removal process is try to relocate when I can, and, um, and it's also uh, respecting the wasps and being intrigued by them and, and their design. Um, and if other channels don't do that, I, I don't hate them for it, you know. It's, that's, their, uh, that's their channel. They can do whatever they want. I, wouldn't, I would hope my viewers wouldn't feel the need to bash any other channels that are doing things differently than mine um, just because they agree with my my removal style and not theirs so so the one thing i want people to understand is that wasps are just as beneficial as honeybees honeybees are non-predatory so they're not going out and, and hunting other insects like wasps do um but that doesn't make wasps not beneficial or you know the a-holes of the insect kingdom just because they sting and hunt since they are predatory, they, um, they hunt insects that, that can decimate crocs and decimate plants. Um, I've relocated bald-faced hornets above my grapevines because they are predatory to insects that can kill my grapevines. So last year I had a ton of Japanese beetles just decimating my, my, um, my grapes. And I was constantly going out and picking off the Japanese beetles and feeding them to the chickens. Um, but this year, I didn't have to bother with that at all because I put hung that bald faced hornet nest above my grapes and they just decimated the Japanese beetle population. I didn't have a single problem with them on my grapevines this year.
So if I can have anybody understand anything about wasps, is that they are just as beneficial and important to the ecosystem, and they should not all be eradicated like a lot of people comment out of ignorance. The reason why they're laid in hexagonals as opposed to circles, you can see that there's if you if if the cells were to be laid as circles, there's all these gaps that would be following around the cells. But since they're laid hexagonally, you'll see that uh There's no wasted space. Everything's tight together. And with nature and by design, now they can utilize the maximum amount of space in um, every single cell. So there is no wasted space like you would see with circles. Same thing could go with squares, but right angles in nature, uh, it's not very common. So the act of feeding these nests and larvae to my chickens was 100% accidental. I brought a nest home the one day and I was taking it apart and doing shots. It's actually the first bald faced hornet nest removal video in my uh, video playlist. And uh, I brought the nest home and started tearing it open and Ginger started pecking them out. So I started throwing the larva to her and to the other girls and they were just going to town on it. And that's when it kind of dawned on me, wow, this is great. Like, you know, I can recycle this nest and it's not 100% lost. And um, so I started posting that. Well, then people started getting really, really interested in the girls. So I just kept adding that content to my videos. And that's kind of what sets me apart from other removal videos um, and other content creators is the fact that I have my girls and it's 100% recycled. And um, that's kind of been my niche here on YouTube is uh, including my girls and other wildlife. And uh, so it's kind of grown on its own. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a plan of mine. I wish that I was that intuitive to have thought of that to add that. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of how things got started. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think for my first QA video for the Hornet King channel. If you guys have any suggestions for any future videos or something you guys like to see me cover in an upcoming video, just also drop in the comments and let me know. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and just hit the subscribe button down here below. And if you'd like to be updated for any future videos that I post, hit the bell notification there at the bottom as well. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my content, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.